Dear students, a warm welcome to VTU e Shikshana program. In the last video, we have come across about the module fourth of artificial neural networks, Accessor Attractor Neural Network. So we have come across with the introduction of Attractor Neural Network, Associative Memory, Associative Memory Modules, and HEPs postulate. In today's class, we are going to discuss about the next topic, which is going to be a linear associative memory. What is a linear associative memory? It is a collection of simple processing units, which have a quite complex collective computational capacity, capabilities and behavior. So this linear associative is the simplest form and a most widely used associative memory models. And thus, neurons uh, works in a linear model, a linear combinations. To understand more about the linear associative memory, let's have assume from the associative memory, A be an input and B be an output, then the associative memory the input and output mapping is going to be represented by B is equal to M A. The B is going to be a memory matrix which is going to be get dealt over there. The memory matrix is going to be a function which is going to deal about this memory associative, a linear associative memory. Example, a stimulus A which is going to be an input which is going to enter into a memory matrix and which produces an output B. So an output B is a function of a product of memory matrix M and the input stimulus A. This is an introduction about a linear associative memory. Let me discuss in general about this linear associative memory. It may come as a surprise that a connection matrix that is formed by taking the outer product of the two vectors as shown in the figure. So which is going to be formed by the outer product of the two vectors W is equal to A1 B1, A1 B2, A1 B3 etc. to A1 Bm and A2 B1, A2 B2, A2 B3 etc. to B2, Bm, and likewise A and B1, A and B2, etc. A and Bm, which is going to provide A into B transfers, which can be a simple associative memory. To keep the discussion simple, we work with a linear neuron. Let me discuss about that. Assume that a single association A is going to be greater than B has been encoded into the connection matrix W using the outer product. Hence, which is going to provide W is equal to A into B transpose. If we present the vector A to F of X, then the activity that develops across Fy is B dash transpose is equal to A transpose of W which yields the results of A transpose A B transpose is equal to modulus A square B T. The outer vector is recalled across the F Y is a select is a scaled version of the B the association of A. If the vector A is normalized we can recall is it an exact what if more than one association needs to be encoded? If more than one association needs to be get encoded, we have to move on to the next slide to understand about the one association, more than one association which needs to be get encoded. The natural course to follow it to superpose the individual association matrices Assume Q associations of 
a k comma b k to the power of q when k is equal to 1 that are to be encoded the resulting connection matrix is going to be then w is equal to summation of a k b k transpose which is the sum of outer products of individual associations such a single super opposition will certainly cause the individual memories to interfere with each other leading to degradation of memory recall performance. So that degradation is going to be get made over there. So the superpose the individual associate matrices leads to degradation of the memory recall performance. Let me discuss in detail about the orthogonal linear associative memory OLAM. A special case arises if the vectors AK are orthogonal, orthonormal orthogonal to one another and normalized to the unity magnitude. In such cases, when an association AI is represented to neurons in the layer FX, a forward pass through the network yields a vector BJ. B dash. So then the B dash transpose is equal to the expression which is going to be get changed into this and which yields the expression to be B i transpose. So the recall of this encoded association B i is perfect. Such associative memories are called orthogonal linear associative memories O L A M. So this encoded associations of B dash which is going to be perfect such associations memories are going to be called as orthogonal linear associative memories. So finally what happens if the vector that are going to be close to the encoded associations are going to get present to the network. So I am going to take an example to provide an insight of this orthogonal linear one shot associative memory with an example. Let me discuss about the example. So considering encoding uh, following the three associations into an orthogonal linear associative memory OLAM. So vector associations are going to be taken as A1, A2, A3 and B1, B2, B3. So which have been defined with this values. When A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3 are column vector associations, encoding uh, generates the following connection matrix as W is equal to A1, B1 transpose plus A2, B2 transpose plus A3, B3 transpose. So the actual values which are going to be dealt into this particular value. So it is easy to verify that the A1, comma A2 and A3 are stable which is going to be fixed points of the system. Let me discuss that particular thing. When A1, A2, A3 are going to be fixed points of the system so that the A1 transpose W is equal to which is going to yield the value of B1 transpose. So this A1 transpose yields the value of B1 transpose. So we can verify this for the vectors A2 as well as A3. Coming to the next one, the addition of the input vector which is going to yield the addition of corresponding associates. So when we are going to deal about this A1 plus A2 transpose into W which creates an outcome of this particular value which deals about the value of minus 1, 5, 4 is equal to which is going to deal about the B to the power of T that is B transpose is equal to B1 plus B2 transpose. So lastly consider a vector A is equal to some values of 9, 1, 1, 1 which is almost approximate to the value of AI which is close to AI then the presentation A of this system which is going to yield 
a different value as a transverse w is equal to 9.111 then it's going to gives a value of b transverse is approximately equal to that of b1 transverse which is close to b1 and it's going to be an association of a1 so the vector input close to encoded domain association yields the output close to the corresponding range of the associates next we are going to move on to an example in this example note that the domain vector ai to the power of q when its i is equal to 1 ai is going to be a subset of bn or orthonormal if in the situation in such a situation if we allow b i to the power of q when i is equal to 1 to be any arbitrary vectors during that time b i is going to be subset of b m then recall of the associates which is going to be perfect so notice that such memories can be used as one shot memory in the sense that feedback is not going to be required for recall such memories can be used for one shot memories so the discussion on linear associative memory provides motivation to study this class of models in a greater deal indeed uh, we are about to do so far the three very important neural network models which are going to be dealt in this linear associative memory the op field auto associative memory the bolman's machine and the bidirectional associative memory this are going to be the very important neural network models in the up field there are many questions cons uh, concerning the associative memories that remain unanswered which will be able to address as we go along uh, to mention a few i am going to discuss about more few more questions over you what is the nature of the dynamics that underlies this models how do we analyze the stability of this model what are the important pathologies that arises in the heps encoded matrix memories what are the capability capacities of this memory so such more questions are going to be unanswered we are going to see about those things and all in this further continuation so both the off field network and the bidirectional associative memory model have their origin in additive dynamics and are closely related to one another it is also interesting to note that incorporation of online learning into bidirectional associative memories brings them to relate to the class of additive resonant models such as uh, grossberg adaptive resonance so next we are going to see about the next topic hub field network hub field network what is an hub field network the hub field network was invented by dr john j hub field in 1982 let we see about that which contains a single layer which contains one or more fully connected recurrent neurons the off field network is going to be commonly used for auto association and optimization tasks recurrence signal layer neural networks are essentially dynamical systems that feed signals back to themselves let me discuss about the basic idea of hub field network this model possesses a rich class of dynamic characteristics by the existence of the several stable stages each which it own basins of attraction if we map this stable states to corresponds to certain desired memory vectors or to solutions of an optimization problems then the time evolution of the dynamics leads to a stable state where the output of the network 
corresponds to a memory or a solution. Such networks are appropriate where the problem solving approach requires the global interactions. This is the basic idea behind the AFIL network. What are the fundamental issues are going to be there in this Hopfield network? There are two fundamental issues which is going to arise in the context. The first one, how do we program the solutions of the problems into the stable state of the network? How the programs are going to be get provided the solutions into the stable state of the network? The next one, how to be ensure that the feedback system designed is stable. So in what way the system what we are going to give and the feedback system which have been designed is going to be ensuring the stability of this particular network. These are the two fundamental issues which is going to get arised. As already we have seen about that, how do we program the solutions of the problems into the stable states of the network. The next, how do we ensure that the feedback system designed is going to be stable? We have already seen that HAP matrix provides a way to encode the associations as memories into a neural networks. This stability can be guaranteed if the system obeys cohen grossberg dynamics. We now see in detail the architecture and the operation of the Hopfield network. This Hopfield network architecture which is going to be shown over there, I have taken an example of one neuron feedback Association, auto association diagram over there which consisting of an input vector and an output vector and it is an auto associative as already we have seen in the last class it is an auto associative feedback has been given over there. So this is an a field network in a recurrent or a feedback network of the form which have been shown in this particular figure. The layer F if you are going to see about this, the layer F comprises an N neutrons, N neutrons which receives an external inputs as I and I is equal to 1, 2, N. The each neuron feedback signal which is going to have a dou X of I through the weights of W, J, I whereas i and j both are going to be 1 to n. The simplest form of this dynamics is the additive activations dynamics model which is going to be introduced over here. So with the help of that it is going to make a passive decays, the external inputs and signal feedbacks. So all are going to be the values which is going to be created over the summation of all this value which is going to deals about the particular value x i. This is an actual architecture of this half fill network. Move on to the next one, neuron characteristics and inverse. Where we can assume that the individual neurons can have distinct signal characteristics. So this signal characteristics which is going to deal about that the signal of x is equal to 1 minus exponential of minus lambda i of x by 1 plus exponential of minus lambda i of x. To remain consistent with the treatment in the Hopfield original paper we employ the bipolar signal model CEO. Although one can use the ordinary signomoid as well with a few minor changes. So with inverse, with your inverse function, we are going to deal about this 
expression into S is equal to second model of x is equal to 1 minus e to the power of x by 1 plus e to the power of minus x. So note that both the signal functions and its inverse are smooth and monotonic, monotonic increasing. This property is going to be employed in the proof of stability of the half field network. Let me discuss the characteristics the neuron characteristics and its inverse characteristics. Figure A shows about the bipolar signal function and figure B shows the inverse of this bipolar signal function when the lambda value is going to be 1. We have taken the lambda value as 1 in both the cases. So the lambda value is going to be dealt with a 1 in both the cases. So the signal functions and its inverse have been plotted in this particular figure A and B which is going to deal about the bipolar signal functions with the lambda values equal to 1. Coming to the next one, half field half networks, a simple notes we are going to see over there. First. The system represents an high dimensional cross coupled nonlinear dynamic systems for which there is a hardly one or any hub finding a closed form of solution. So second, in this original half field network, the weight Wij is usually set to zero. The neurons do not feedback signals to them. Third, as we discussed about this, as we show ahead, the model under consideration has a Cohen Crossberg form for which it is necessary that connections be symmetric for stability to provide Wij is equal to is equal to w j i such a way it is going to be get make the symmetric for this stability. Let me discuss about the electronic circuit interpretation of the adaptive signals. It has a circuit theoretic interpretations to see this let me consider about the electronic circuit drawn in this side which has and N amplifiers with feedback current through the resistance RJs through the resistance RJs. Each amplifier is going to be associated with a input leakage capacitor. The input leakage capacitor which have been connected to this individual amplifiers and the leakage resistance R and a leakage resistance R which is going to be get connected over there. So each amplifier also receives an external current input I which is going to be get supplied over there. So external current input all the current inputs are going to be get supplied over there to this amplifier. So this electrical circuit, the electronic circuit which assumes that the ith input and the output amplifier voltage to be the xi which is going to be the value which is going to get provided over there. Such a thing we are going to discuss about this under assuming that the Kirchhoff's current law equation at the input node for this ith amplifier can be written as thus ci xi transverse plus xi by ri is equal to summation of the total current which is going to be flowing over there with the resistance connected over there and the applied input current 
which can be easily rearranged as like this with the help of rearrangement yields the result as like this. Coming to the next one, the correspondence between the equation should be clearly notified and it is clear by noting that Ai is equal to 1 by Rc where this W is equal to 1 by Rc and that the external input in this equation and the current in equations are differently only in the scale as 1 by C. So, coming to the next one as Hopfield model as a coherent Crossberg form, an interesting paper by Crossberg reveals that the various modes often though to be an independent or actually special cases of the coherent Cohen Crossberg model, which recalls the models that possess co Cohen Crossberg dynamics have the general form of this equation where ai of xi is going to be greater than or equal to 0 and wij is equal to wji and d dash is going to be d dash of xj is going to be greater than 0. We have also seen that this model admits Lyapunova function which is going to be creating an expression as e is equal to summation of bi integral from 0 to xi of bi alpha and d dash of alpha and d alpha i plus half of summation of this terminology and are globally asymptotically stable. So, by rearranging this expression the upfield model can be rearranged into the coherent Cohen Crossberg form which straight forward towards the substitutions which yields the value as like this. Here the all the additive models leads to a constant amplification functions as ai of xi and linear self feedback functions bi of xi. Coming to this off-field model of Lyapunov function, the off-field model Lyapunov function is easily derived from the cohen crossberg Lyapunov function using the offset substitutions as shown below. This is precisely the Lyapunov function that off-field proposed in this paper. With the help of this function, one can prove the stability of the system in both continuous and discrete time as discussed in the subsequent sections. So, let me discuss about the stability analysis in the continuous time. Recall that to prove the stability of the system, we need to show that the electricity E is strictly negative from the chain rule of the calculus. So, it is going to show that this electricity is going to be summation of dou E by dou Si into Si. Setting I is equal to 1 again as a gain. So, setting gain is equal to 1. So, when you are going to substitute this values from the additive dynamic equation, where you get, we are going to get the value of this A is equal to minus of xi. So, which yields the value and it is going to be greater than always it is going to be greater than 0. This product of xi and si is always positive since both the activations and signal time derivatives have the same sign. So, the positivity of this product also follows 
from the monotonicity of this both signal function and the time derivatives of, of, of all the signals which is goes to 0. So, sometime or the signal cases to evolve further in time when the time derivatives of this energy goes to 0. So, the signal state trajectory must eventually come to rest. This establishes the stability of this system in continuous time. So, let me discuss about the operation of this Hopfield model and stability analysis in discrete time. The Lyapunov energy for Hopfield network with high gain neurons are going to be dealt in this. Recall that the binary threshold signal function is going to be actually a limiting case of this sigmoidal function as lambda i tends to infinite. When the neuron gain scale factor lambda i tends to infinite, we say that the network operates in the high gain limit. If we allow lambda i is equal to infinite, then the energy function is going to be reduced to this E is equal to half of summation of double summation of W into S minus summation of I into S. In the absence of this external inputs, the energy function can be reduced to the familiar quadratic form as E is equal to minus half of S transpose into W S. So, where S is equal to S1, comma S2, comma S3, etc. up to Sn whole transpose. Let me discuss about the neuron switching in high gain. In this high gain limit, a neuron switches states from minus 1 to 1 plus 1 or from plus 1 to minus 1 at a district intervals of time by sampling its current activation. At the kth instant of this time, the neuron update its activations and signal to instant of k plus 1 where n accordance with the difference equations. So, this equation is going to provide a current activation of this x to the power of k i projects the summation of w into dou x of k plus i where when s is equal to 1 minus 1 or summation of sorry dou x i if this conditions are going to be get satisfied. When i is equal to 1 to n where the subscript of i on the signal functions has been dropped since all the neurons operates in the high gain limit. Note that the positive and negative activation translate unambiguously to 1 and minus 1. Whereas the common neuron does not change if its activation is going to be 0. So, when this is going to be 0, the neuron does not change if this activation is going to be 0. So, the positive activation and the negative activation translates unambiguously. It may be plus 1 or it may be minus 1. There we are going to study about the neuron switching in the high gain value. Coming to the next one, stability analysis in the discrete time. At the time instant k, we assume the energy of the system to be E k. So, we are going to deal about this value of E is equal to minus half of double summation of W i j into S to the power of i j and minus summation of this current. 
the neuron state changes at the time instant will yield a new system state vector and consequently the new system energy is going to be created over there. Hence, we are going to have the change in energy from the time instant k to k plus 1 is defined as del e k is equal to e k plus 1 minus e k. Without any loss of generically, we may assume that only one neuron say that i change state. Note that in the double summation of this equation e k that are two set of terms that involves index i. One when i is equal to capital I and other is equal to j is equal to i. For the moment we are only interesting in the energy E k compromising terms that involve the index I. Let me see about the stability analysis in detail. Since the changes in the energy of this del E k involves only in the ith neuron, we have the del E k values equal to always less than 0. This proves that the stability of this Hopfield net, hop network is in the discrete time. So, this statistics, the stability analysis which is going to provide or prove that the stability of this Hopfield network in the discrete time which is going to be deals as like this. So, the energy E is a function of the states and decreases monotonically in time in accordance with the Lyapunawa theorem. So, the system is going to be therefore globally asymptotically stable which is going to be dealt in such a way. So, if I are going to deal about an example, whatever be the initial state of the network the energy decreases continuously with time until the system settles down into any one local minimum of the energy surface. At the local minimum, the energy stops changing and the network state stabilizes. The class of recurrent network described by the system possesses the stable dynamics. So, this figure shows the energy surface of a two neuron Hopfield network that has two minima at minus 1 comma 1 and 1 comma minus 1. Each counter lines corresponds to a constant energy value and the energy landscape smoothly decreases towards these two points at which it is minima. We are going to see about this value the energy function of this half field. So, one energy functions and next energy function both are going to be get represented over here. This means that when the network state starts out of some initial value, its states evolves to eventually settle down to the closest local minimum. Put into another way, the network relaxes to an attractor in whose basin of attraction the initial value lies. It is the phenomenon of attraction to the fixed network state that has to be interrupted as a memory cell. So, now the minima of this energy surface need to represent a state corresponding to the memory which are to be encoded in the network. The relaxation of this minimum can then be interrupted as a memory cell. Having addressed the issue of stability of our field, we now address the issue of how program memories as stable state of the systems. To understand about that, we can see about the applications of our field network, the pattern completion. 
Attract neural networks such as the off-field network and the bidirectional associative memory have a neural ability or a natural ability to implement associative memory applications since associations is uh, naturally embedded in such models. So this associative property emerges by virtue of the symmetric of internal connections and from the and from the fact that desires the memories are programmed to be stable state of the network. Here the computation is going to be viewed as an error correction motion towards the closest memory of an energy landscape. So a basic principle of this optimization algorithm is to search through the solution space in which a way or a direction that decreases as well defined cost function that is going to be required to be minimized. Such in case for example in this uh, simulated annealing optimization procedure described in the next session. So the context of this attractor neural network which is going to deal about the function solutions to the optimization problem can be mapped onto the stable states of the neural network then the network can be made to evolve towards one of the solutions from an initial state to do those uh, what we can say one need to appro uh, appropriately uh, designs the energy function of the network such that the stable states defines the possible solutions that have been emerging uh, that are proportional to that of the cost of function of the problem. So the half field and uh, it, uh, what I can say that half field network is going to be used to encode three graphic patterns. So which have been shown in the figure as a plane, a tank and an helicopter. So these three patterns, these images have been defined on 12 cross 12 pixels based on these images. Uh, grids are going to be get portrayed on this figure. Each figure was represented by 144 dimensional bipolar vector. One for a white pixel and minus one for a back black pixel. These vectors are encoded into a 144 dimensional off field network using a bipolar outer product encoding. Recall the bipolar encoding of these patterns also encodes their complements. This means that there are going to the three complement state spurious attractors among us a number of other mixture states. We do however expect that partially distracted patterns will be cleaned up to their original form. In other words, we can say that as long as the uh, destruction level is still such that the initial points lies within the basin of attraction of the encoded memory. So image cleaning up and proper recalls are going to be guaranteed over there. So coming to the next one. Here, for the purpose we have to identify this one, the picture portrays a 40% of distorted plane which is going to be distorted version of the original plane image. This means that a random sample of 58 pixels of this original 144 pixels of this plane image have been inverted. If you are going to see about for the purpose of the simulation, we employed a pure asynchronous update. We only have to ensure that each neuron in this network is going to be updated the same number of times on average. In the present simulation, the order of update of these neurons was randomized, but it was ensured that the each neuron was updated at least once during a field update cycle involving ensured that involving all the 144 neurons. So the figure shows the snapshot of the simulation at the iteration of 48, 72, 96, 120 iteration 
and finally 144 iteration. So this 40% of this distorted image is going to be cleaned up in a single update cycle at the iteration of 144 the plane original image are being attained over there. Move on to the next example of three dimensional object recognition. The three dimensional object recognition. An interesting application of our field network comes from the field of three dimensional object recognition. The three dimensional object recognition involves matching an object to a descriptive of a sense in order to determine its position and orientation in space. The solution to tie problem employs a database of object model which comprises two dimensional projections of three dimensional objective viewed from different angles. This topology is uh, topologically different views are going to be referred to as characteristics views and are usually generated by an automated procedure. So due to the large library of characteristics views that can be generated the three dimensional object recognition task become extremely complex. One such object recognition strategy which has been proposed by Professor Lin that employs hub field network. This procedure is going to be especially which have been recognized of the object is going to be performed based on two steps of recognition procedure. The procedure is going to be especially a two step recognition process. The first step a coarse grained recognition of this object is going to get performed on a polygonal region matching of this two dimensional projections this coarse grain recognition of this particular object is going to get performed. In the second step a fine grained recognition is going to be performed based on matching of the vertex sequences. So both the stages employs employs a off field network that comprises a two dimensional rays of neurons. Since the primary motivation of this present discussion is to be details involved in the design of this network for such an application and considering that the coarse grained and fine grained recognition network designed procedures are very similar but being different in the way of connections that are going to be get calculated. We discuss only the coarse grained recognition in detail and summarize the fine recognition procedure. So the position and orientation in space is going to be called the pose. Move on to the next three dimensional object recognition. The labeled regions of the slotted wedges in a particular view of this objects are going to be seen over here. A different slots have been provided which have been labeled in a particular view of this particular object. In the present application it is assumed that the three dimensional objects are described by two dimensional projections in the form of line drawings obtained by segment of this original image. So the starting point is to describe each projection by a set of figures which is going to have its own features over there. So this figure portrays a two dimensional projection of a slotted wedge with different region numbers from 0 to 7. So starts with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is an example of the labeled image. The labeling involves calculating the area of each region and tracking the boundary to determine the corner points. This area is a local feature to catch region. 
one each region once each region has been labeled a global relationship is going to be get computed over there global features are going to be get computer as shown in this figure the region 2 if you're going to see about this region 2 this global feature in this distance from the centroid of this region 2 to the centroid of all other regions so both the area and the distance are suitably, so suitably normalized so which is going to be dealt about this particular view let me see about the off-field network for the three-dimensional object recognition. So, whenever these points which have been highlighted over there, those are going to be get related and which is going to provide the three-dimensional object which is going to recognize in such a way over here. So, this is a half-field network for this three-dimensional object recognition. With this, I will wind up this video. We will continue in the next video. Thank you.